Good day students, welcome to MathWithServe.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 25 to 29 of the June 2016 Geometry Common Core Region 6 exam. All right, let's take a look at um, question number 25. It reads, describe the sequence of transformations that will map triangle ABC onto triangle DEF as shown below. So one thing you want to note is the orientation of these two triangles. Okay, what you notice is that triangle ABC has been flipped in order to generate um, triangle DEF. Okay, that's not the only um, transformation that was used, but there has to be a reflection of some sort in our transformation. Okay, so keep that in mind. Now, what we're going to do is we want to go from point A which is the coordinates uh, 1, 3. And then we'll want to end up um, to end up in what point? What point is does A get mapped to? That's the question. So you have triangle A, B, C, D. I mean, triangle A, B, C. It is mapped to triangle D, E, F. Now, all you just need to do is let the um, letters on the vertices be your guide. Okay? A is the first letter in this first triangle, and then we have triangle D, E, D, um, vertex D is the first letter in the second triangle. So what does that mean? Point A gets mapped to point D. Okay, so this point right here gets mapped to this point right here. Remember, we must include a reflection in our uh, transformation process because the orientation of the triangle got flipped, okay? A gets mapped to D, B gets mapped to E, C gets mapped to F. So let's just focus on A. Um, as long as we include the reflection in the, in the composite transformation, we'll be confident that our result will be correct. Okay, so A, which is 1, 3, gets mapped to point D, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 7, 1, 2, 3, negative 3. So what sequence of transformations will help us accomplish this? One way we can look at it is we can shift to this point right above D, okay? And then reflect downwards, bam, like that. Or we can reflect downwards, straight down, and shift this amount of points to D. So any of these transformations should um, accomplish the same result, all right? so. How many units are we shifting to the right to a point vertically above D? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to shift six units to the right. This is a movement only along the x-axis, okay? So just keep that in mind. Now, after shifting six units to the right, do we shift six units down to get to the final point? The answer is no. Remember, there has to be a reflection on our transformation because the orientation got flipped. If the orientation of this triangle were not flipped, if it were an exact same orientation as this original one, then we can just use another um, shift to complete the transformation, okay? So that is not the case here. In this case, we have to reflect uh, downwards across what? Across the x-axis. That's the axis of reflection here. That will mirror this point down to this point right here, okay, and then reflect downwards. Okay, so um, let's go ahead and write down our transformation. So the first one is the shift. We're going to shift six units to the right. How do you write that? The notation for that, since it's only a movement along the x-axis, that can be written as t uh, 6, 0. Okay, this means that you add 6 to the x-coordinate. If we do that here, what do you see happening? This point here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 3, 7, 3. You see? Uh, point A was 1, 3. If you add 6 to the x-coordinate, doesn't it take you to this point? 
it certainly does. So that's why you have six zero. This is um this indicates a horizontal shift in the right direction. If there were a shift up or down vertically, then there'll be a numerical component for the y. Okay. All right. So after the shift, we're now going to reflect um, downwards across the x-axis. Okay. So how how do we write that? How do we write a um, downward reflection across the x-axis? Uh, you just simply write R for reflection and the line that you're reflecting across. In this case, you're reflecting across the x-axis. When you reflect across the x-axis, what happens is that the sign of the other coordinate, the y-coordinate, gets inverted. Okay, And then you end up with 7. And then you switch the sign of the y coordinate, negative 3. And that's exactly the coordinate of point D where we were supposed to map A to. Okay, if you have time, you can test our transformation on B and C, and you end up with the correct points. Okay, so now remember I told you earlier that if you shift and then try and then reflect, it's the same thing as reflecting first and then shifting. So that basically means that we can write our answers in two different ways. Now, one thing you want to note is that this is not always the case. Okay, sometimes the order of transformation matters, but in this case, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so transformation. This is going to be a composite transformation or um, a sequence of transformations. So we can do our shift first. Uh, this this we can reflect first downwards and then shift so we can do reflect across the x-axis and then shift downwards. So when you're writing down the composite transformation, you write down what you do last first. Okay, so if I wanted to do, let me enumerate them. This is uh, uh, path one and this is path two. Okay, if you wanted to do path one, which is um, a reflection and then a Translation, you have to write what you did last first, which is a translation, six units to the right, T60, composed with the reflection across the x-axis. All right? Or you can do it the other way. It'll still give you the same um, geometric figure, the same image, triangle DEF. You could do your um, trans translation first, and then your reflection second. So whatever one you do second, you write that first, reflection across the x-axis. Composed, you see this little zero o, o right here? It means com composed, a, com a composition, okay? Um, that one, this is done after translating or shifting your triangle six units to the right, depicted by T sub six comma zero. All right, so these are the two sequence of transformations that will result in this shape, triangle D, E, F. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at question 26. It says a point P is on segment AB such that AP um, is proportional to PB. The ratio of AP to PB is equal to 4 to 5, okay? If A has coordinates 4, 2 and B has coordinates 22, 2, determine this and state the coordinates of P. Okay, so um, let's take a look at these two points here, 4, 2, and 22, 2. What do you notice about the two points? If you look at the points closely, you'll notice that the y coordinates are the same. If the y coordinates are the same, that means that we have a horizontal line. There's no rise here, we just have a run, okay? So if we call this starting point A, if we call it 4, 2, then we can call the ending point right here B, 22, 2. All right, so this is just a horizontal line. Now there is a P somewhere here, okay? And a P is positioned in such a way that this segment is broken in the ratio 4 to 5, okay? So what does that mean? It simply means that this portion right here 
is going to be um, 4, which is the first number, over the sum. 4 plus 9, I mean 4 plus 5. So this segment is going to be 4 ninth of the entire section, of this entire length. And then, guess what? This other portion is going to be what? If you take 4 ninths from one whole, what do you left with? You left with 5 ninths, right? So let me just do the math for you. It's going to be, see the second number, 5? Five, 5 over the combination of the two ratios, 4 plus 5, as we did over here. So this second uh, section right here, PB, I'm going to put my alphabet here. So PB is going to be 5 ninths of the entire uh, length, and then AP is going to be 4 ninths of the entire length. Okay, the question is, what are the coordinates of P? Let us call it X sub P comma Y sub P. Now, what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out the length of this from A to P and then add it to our um, X and the Y coordinates, okay? Actually, we're just going to be adding it to the X since um, we don't have any movements up or down. We're just moving horizontally. So let me show you the formula. So you have um, x of p is going to be the, this length right here is going to be 4 ninths of the change in x. Okay, the entire change in x is 22 minus 4. Okay, so that's your run. So when you figure out that length that gives you this portion, you're going to add it to your starting point 4. Okay, for the y, this one is interesting because we're going to be calculating four ninths of the rise. What is the rise here? There is no rise, right? But let me show you numerically. We're going from two, that was the uh, final y coordinate minus the original y coordinate, which is the same. Okay, so this calculates the um, split using the ratio to determine the portion of the entire rise, which is non-existent. And then we're going to be adding that to your starting y value, which is 2. So let's go ahead and simplify these two to determine what the coordinates are. So we have 4 ninths. 22 minus 2 is 18 uh, plus 4. Let's see what we can do here. 9 goes into itself once. 9 goes into 18 twice. 4 times 2 is 8 plus 4, which is 12. Okay, so that's the uh, x coordinate. Y coordinate, you could guess what that is, right? The y coordinate never changes, so it should be 2. So we have 4 over 9, 2 minus 2 is 0, plus 2. You don't have order of operations, you multiply first, so you have 0 plus 2, and you get 2. So we're not surprised because this is a horizontal line, okay? So final answer, coordinates. <clears throat> of point P is 12 for the X and 2 for the Y. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at problem number 27. It says, um, in triangle CED as shown below, points A and B are located on sides CE and ED respectively. Line segment AB is drawn such that AE is 3.75, AC is 5, EB is 4.5, and BD is 6. Question. Explain why segment AB is parallel to CD. Now, for this problem, you need to recall a particular theorem known as the triangle proportionality theorem. What it says that it says is that if a line is if a line divides two sides of a triangle proportionally, then it is parallel to the third side. Okay, what on earth is that saying? Well, let me give you a little uh, illustration as to what that um, theorem is saying. So let's say you have a triangle, okay? If you have a segment that divides any two sides, let's say you're looking at this side and this side, if these two sides are divided proportionally, well, what does that mean? Let's say this is A, B, C, D. And um, let's say this is, um, let's call it 
A, B, C, D. Now what this theorem is saying is if A over B, these two sides right here, if it's proportional to C over D, guess what? This automatically means that this line segment that's dividing these two sides, A, B, is going to be parallel to the third side of the triangle CD. That's what the triangle proportionality theorem is trying to tell us, okay? All right, so that's what we're going to apply here. Uh, we have the side measures provided if they're in proportion. Um, if they're divided proportionally, then AB is parallel to CD. That will be our conclusion. All right, so what we're going to do as a test. We're going to test if A, C, A E over A C, this side and this side, if it's, it's proportional to E B over um, B D, if they divide it proportionally by this segment, then what can we conclude? We can conclude that uh, segment AB is parallel to segment CD by the triangle proportionality theorem. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the test. We're going to start with the left side. Okay, so AE over AC equals EB over BD. So using the measures that we have, AE is 3.75 over AC, which is 5. The question is, is it equal to EB, which is 4.5, over BD, which is 6? Are they equal? All you have to do is plug it in your, into your calculator. Let's see. So if I do 3.75 divided by 5, <clears throat> I get uh, 0 0.75. Let's put a question mark here because um, we, we don't know yet. Okay, is this true or false? Okay, and then um, 4.5 divided by 6. Let's do that with calculator. 4.5 divided by 6. Voila, we got the same thing. Okay, so 0 0.75. So this AB does divide the size proportionally. So since AB divides the size proportionally, then it is parallel to the third side um, CD. Okay, so let's write an explanation because that's what the problem asked us to do. Since, since segment AB divides um, AC and AB, the two sides of the triangle, since uh, it divides them proportionally, what's our conclusion? Then segment AB is parallel to segment CD by the triangle proportionality theorem. Proportionality theorem, okay? So there you have it. All right, let's take a look at question 28. It says, find the value of R that will make the equation sine 73 equals cosine R true when R is between 0 and 90 degrees. Explain your answer. Okay, there are two ways we can do this um, problem. First one involves your knowledge of the co-function identities. All right, so let's assume that you know your co-function identities. So let's see how we can use that to solve this problem method one using the co function identities okay all right so for method one 
we're going to start by writing down what the cofunction identity is. There are different ones, but let's write down the one that's um, applicable to this scenario. So the identity we're looking at here is that sine theta is equal to cosine of the sub of the complement of theta 90 minus theta. Okay. So we know that um, theta in this case is 73 degrees, right? So let's apply that here. Sine of 73 using our cofunction identity is cosine of 90 minus 73. So that gives us cosine of 90 minus 73 is 17. So that follows that R is equal to 17 degrees, okay? We are asked to explain, so we have to do that. Explanation. All right, so using the cofunction identity, cofunction, using the cofunction's identity, we can see, see that what? What can we see? We can see that the sine of an angle, the sine of an angle, could be theta or 73, or any angle between us uh, 0 and 90 degrees, the sine of an angle is equal to the cosine of the complement of that angle. Of that angle. Okay, and um, 17 degrees is the complement of seven of 73 degrees, and big R is equal to 17 degrees. All right, so that's basically. Uh, how to do it using the cofunction's identity. Now, let's say you don't know the cofunction's identity or you don't remember it or you don't like it. There's another method that you can use, uh, which is SOKATOA. Okay, method two is using SOKATOA. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the same triangle twice, and then I'm going to see if we can come up with two um, trick functions, then the sine and cosine that generates exactly the same ratio. All right. Okay, so um, I'm just I'm just taking a look at two right triangles here. Um, this is my 90 degree angle. Let's call this 73. Okay. All right. So in this triangle right here, we're looking at sine. Oh, uh, this is the reference angle. This side right here, let's call this A, let's call this B, let's call this C. If this is a reference angle, that automatically makes A our opposite and makes C our hypotenuse. Well, C is always the hypotenuse regardless of which angle we pick, right? So what is sine? We know from Sokatoa that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. That's so, right? In this problem, sine 73 is going to be your opposite A over your hypotenuse C. All right, let's freeze there for a second and go to this triangle. Same triangle, but we're going to use the complement of 73 because we know the sum of the angles in the triangle is uh, 180. So if you um, subtract 73, I mean, if you subtract, if you add 73 and 90 together and subtract from 180, you get this one right here, which is 17. So let me show you what I'm doing. So you do 180 minus 90 minus 73. What you're actually doing is you're subtracting 73 from, one, from 90, okay? If this is already 90, guess what? The other two have to add up to 90 because 90 plus 90 is 180, yeah? Okay, so this is 17 degrees. This is always C, the hypotenuse. Okay, but now this is our reference angle. So if this is our reference angle. This becomes the opposite. This side A right here, guess what? It becomes our adjacent. Okay? So 
adjacent and hypotenuse cosine of 17 degrees. Oh, wait, let's do this first. Let's write down what cosine theta is using our formula. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. From where? From ka. Okay. So cosine of 17 degrees is equal to adjacent A over hypotenuse C. Check this out. Exactly the same thing. A over C and A over C. All right. So we have to write our explanation for this method. So let's go ahead and do it. Explanation. Since sine of an angle in the triangle above is equal to the cosine of its complement. Angle R has to be equal to 17 degrees. Okay, so sine of this angle is equal to cosine of its complement. Since this is 73 degrees, this has to be the complement of 73, which is 17. End of story. All right, let's take a look at question 29. It says in the diagram below, circle 1 has radius 4 and circle 2 has radius 6.5. Angle A intercepts an arc length of pi and angle B intercepts an arc length of 13 pi over 8. Question. Dominic thinks that angle A, angles A and B have the same radian measure. State whether Dominic is correct or not. So in this problem, we just have to figure out the angular measure in radians of angle A and B and compare them. If they are equal, then Dominic is correct, okay? So before we get started, we need a formula that relates uh, the radius of a circle with its arc length. So let's write down the formula. <clears throat> now there are two formulas, okay? One of them has to do with degrees, the other has to do with radians. We are dealing with radians here, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to use the formula S is equal to theta R. All right, so we're going to do um, circle one and then circle two. We, the goal again is to isolate theta, the angular measure. Circle one, for circle one, uh, relationship S is equal to R theta. S is the arc length here, okay? So that's S. So um, S <coughs> here is pi theta times the radius. This is R. So R is four. So what's uh, the angle? Um, the angle, we can make a substitution to, this is called A, so let's call, let's put A in there. Save us time, so call that big A. All right, so what is big A? The angular measure in radian form of circle A, of this uh, sector um, in circle A. To accomplish that, we simply divide both sides by four, and that gives us the measure of angle A as pi over four radians. Is that the case with angle B? Let's see. All right, don't let the size of the triangles fool you into thinking, oh, you know what, since this is a big triangle, it's a bigger triangle, so the angle is going to be bigger. You have to work it out, okay? You got to solve the problem and know for a certainty if uh, angle B is bigger, okay? All right, so let's apply the formula to this triangle right here. This is our theta. This is R. And see its length right here, the sector? That's S. Let's plug it in. S is 13 pi over 8. Uh, theta, what is theta? That's big B. And R is 6.5. Okay, so um, to do this, what we'll do is we're going to divide both sides by 6.5. Divide by 6.5, divide by 6.5. And then we're going to have big B. Now, this looks like a monstrosity right here. So let me show you how to correctly enter this into your calculator so you don't um, generate a group in error. All right, so we have parentheses. Well, let me make sure my mode is correct. So, yeah, it's correct. 
All right, so 13, 13 pi divided by 8. See, that's a numerator, so we group them together like this. All right, divided by 6.5. Enter, that's what you get. Okay, but um, huh, we have this decimal approximation right here, and this one is pi over 4. So how do we know this is pi over 4? You just simply convert pi over 4 to decimal form, right? So just pi over 4, enter pi over 4, see what you get. Enter. Yeah, you get the same thing, okay? So what's that telling you? It tells us that this answer we got in decimal form is the same thing as pi over 4 as the calculator just uh, uh, showed us, okay? You can do this problem using fractions, but it'll take longer. I just want to save you time. That's why I'm sh showing you how to do it quickly with a calculator, okay? So is Dominic correct or not? Dominic stated that the angles have the same radian radi measure. Um, the answer is yes. Explanation, we have to explain. Uh, Dominic is correct. You have to state that, okay? Correct, because the angular measure of um, both angles a and B are equal to what? Pi over 4. Okay, since uh, the angle they're both equal to pi over 4, then Dominic is correct. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. We appreciate it. If you found the contents of this tutorial um, helpful in your preparation for the upcoming uh, Regents exam, please give us a thumbs up. Your positive feedback is very uh, valuable and supportive to us. If you have any questions or comments, just place it in the comment section below. I will be more than glad to uh, respond. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for updates to the remainder of this review series. More clips can be found on math.serve.com on the test prep. Thanks again for watching and have a wonderful day. Goodbye.